We have our Christmas tree up, plus other decorations, as you can see. Let's see if we can zoom in on this. Our tree shows a, what's important to us. Let me go up here. There's a little, little manger scene made out of wood. That's over 50 years old. I bought that in Germany. That popcorn, my wife put that together as she was sitting next to her father's bed as he died. And that was in the 1980s. Come down here, we have another ornament. This one with an angel on it. You can see the things that are important to us. We're going to talk about that today. It's called a creed. Today we're going to study creeds, specifically the Apostles' Creed. What is a creed? The official definition, which I will read, a creed is a statement of belief intended to portray the faith and also to give a standard against which to harmonize teachings of the faith. This is what we believe. Not something else, this, this is it. We have three creeds that we use, although there's plenty more than that. We use the Apostles' Creed, that's our most common one, the Nicene Creed, and the Athanasian Creed. The, the, uh, yeah, the Apostles' Creed was once called the Roman Creed. Its origin is ancient, being the old baptismal creed in the uh, Church of Ancient Rome. In time, it gained wide acceptance as a faithful uh, expression of the Holy Scriptures. The Nicene Creed was constructed at two worldwide church councils in 325 and 381. Well, 56 years apart. To settle disputes about scriptural teaching regarding Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Now the Athanasian Creed was adopted by the Worldwide Church at a council in 589. So you had the Nicene at 381, you had the Athanasian at 589, and this was constructed to settle disputes regarding the scriptural teaching of the Holy Trinity. You can see, we didn't have anything just all set up. Jesus died and poof, that's it, we got it all set up. But what is a creed? I mean, I've given you the definition. Do you have creeds in your life? Are you aware of them? <coughs> it's what we believe as a congregation. And what happens if you betray your creed? You've got this thing that you say, this is important. What kind of creeds do you have? One I can think of easily is I have a creed that says I believe in hard work. And if I work hard, then there will be good results overall. You may have a creed that says, if I work hard at school and get good grades and do things, other things, I can maybe go to college, I'll graduate, I'll have work I like to do, and I'll be paid well for it. Now that's your creed. Working hard, getting good grades, you believe that if you do, do those things, it will result in this. These are your beliefs. Now you have to understand your creeds or creed 
is developing. In fact, is my creed is still developing and changing. Throughout our life, we have experiences, we have situations where things just change. But this is what's important to us. This is how we believe we should live. Now, somewhere here, I have the book. The Small Catechism. Dum, 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 dum. What the Small Catechism has in it is information about the Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer, Holy Baptism, Communion, and finally Confession. Confirmants have memorized sections of this book. I had to memorize sections of this book. Not as much as my parents or great-grandparents had to. Where did it come from? Well, Martin Luther is going around in Germany and he realizes that people don't know their own faith, the important points. They need to be educated. Well, you've got monks and priests and all types of things that are doing teaching, but not effectively, and they're pretty busy. So Martin Luther says, I'm going to write something, and this is in 1520, or in the 1520s, and he discovered that there was so much variance, too, between different churches, how they taught things or what they believed, that we needed to get some education. It was a stunning lack of understanding of the basics of the Christian faith among both lay people and pastors. So in the small catechism, he give, wrote, a concise but rich explanation of the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, the Commandments, Baptism, Communion, the Office of the Keys and Confession, important things. But the one thing that you have to remember is he wrote the small catechism for families. I mean, millions of us throughout the centuries and the world have studied and memorized it. It's been a rite of passage in the Lutheran mo movement. In other words, going to catechism was a rite of passage. Then you can become a member. It, this is kind of, this book makes it kind of the Lutherans. We are Lutherans because we have communion and all the other things. But you go to confirmation and that makes you a Lutheran. Well, maybe not. But The two things that you'll hear in this book, which are just famous throughout the world, is that Two phrases, what does this mean? And this is most certainly true. We make jokes about it. It's so funny. And those are two, if you say those two phrases, people know you're a Lutheran. If we got into the book, you would see, what does this mean? You get to the end of this, and it says, this is most certainly true. Each one of these sections. Now, the Apostles' Creed, we all say it sometime in worship. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. I believe in Jesus Christ. God's only Son, our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate. Was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. 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 He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church. The communion of saints. The forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness of sins. The resurrection of the body. The resurrection. The resurrection. And the life. And life everlasting. Amen. The Apostles' Creed. Let's talk about that. Back in 325, the year 325, in Nicaea, Nicaea, the Emperor Constantine pulled together the Christian leaders from across the Roman Empire to reach a consensus on the basic doctrines Christians were fighting to the point of violence about the divine nature of Jesus and how we have, when we have Easter and, you know, the emperor said, let's get this all straightened out. This became known as the First Ecumenical Council and the creeds we have now, including the Apostles' Creed, came from a combination of documents resulting from the First Ecumenical Council as well as the Second Ecumenical Council at Constantinople in 381. I mentioned that before, those two dates, 325, 381, 56 years apart. Martin Luther was a big fan of the Apostles' Creed. We see a clear statement of who God is and what God continues to make. Let me say that again. What God does. What, when we wonder what God we, which God we serve, Luther wants us to be clear. Our God made everything and continues to make everything. Our God is an ongoing, is in an ongoing relationship with creation. Luther writes, God has given me and still preserves my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all limbs and faculties, shoes and clothing, food and drink, house and farm, spouse and children, livestock and all property along with all the necessities and nourishments for this body and life. The first part of the Apostles' Creed points to God's character as Creator and Almighty Father. These two tell us a lot about who God is, a loving, watching, involved Creator who keeps working and making and creating now and forever. God stays intimately connected to what's been created and indeed keeps creating throughout all time. A creed is not the end of the conversation about faith. Just as God continues to create, we continue to talk, to ask questions, to live in community, and to figure out how to explain who this great God is and what God means in our lives. These creeds have allowed us to 
hold together as a Christian faith instead of splitting apart as much or more than we have. And we have split apart a lot. Some faiths, I'm sure, or Christian faiths believe more in the Nicene Creed or something else. Okay, Article 1 of the Apostles' Creed. Let me pull the book up. The book. The first article. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has created me in all that exists. He has given me and still preserves my body and soul with all their powers. He provides me with food and clothing, home and family, daily work, and all I need from day to day. God also protects me in time of danger and guards me from every evil. All this he does out of fatherly and divine goodness and mercy, though I do not deserve it. Therefore, I surely ought to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. See, I told you it was coming. This is most certainly true. I didn't mention that there's a large catechism too. You don't want to even go into that because that talks about theology and really, really gets wrapped around a lot of words and things. And it was never meant for us as just sitting here in a congregation member to go through. Now, I'm, some pastors may disagree with that because they study it when they're in seminary. Reminds me of a story there was a young man I knew in seminary. Uh, I was not in seminary. He came uh, to, to do some singing and be a member of uh, a synod assembly over 10 years ago. He had a creed. and He was going to be, become a pastor in the next couple months. He was that close to graduating from seminary. It was during the summer and he was down in Haiti and there was an earthquake. He was in an orphanage. He was teaching there. He was helping out the people because they were very poor. Very, very, very poor. And everyone ran out of the building when the earthquake started, but he could not make it. And he was caught in the collapsing building. Now his wife, who was also in seminary, and his cousin, who was also a seminarian, were outside. And they heard him singing a hymn, a part of the liturgy, as he died. What was important to him? What was his creed? He was in a building, teaching, doing things for people who had so many needs. He put his life on the line. And when he realized he was going to die, he sang praises to God for everything he had been given. It's a sad story, but he believed. Now let's go back to that first article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. 
It doesn't say we. It doesn't say my church, my congregation, my country. It says I. This is a personal statement. You are saying, I believe. In God the Father Almighty. The Father. What is the ideal parent? A parent takes care of you. It could be, I believe in God the Mother Almighty. Because God was neither father or male or female. Really. God was God. Or is God. He's might, almighty. He's got all the power. Can make things. Do things. He's maker of heaven and earth. In other words, everything around us. Not only just the physical things. Like the dirt outside. Or things like that. But made us. He's made all the good things in our lives, not the bad things. Let's not get into that mindset. He gives us so many good things. He gives us opportunities to do good. Well, I've talked enough. And I'm sure you're just so excited about hearing more from me. But my voice is starting to go so I just want to say, hey, people, I wish I could see you in person. I wish we could sit around with some pizzas, sit on a carpeting floor in front of my tree here and talk. Just, you know, see each other and enjoy having each other as friends. Well, see you next week in this video, another video. And next week, we're going to talk about the second article of the Apostles' Creed. Have a good one.